Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be looking at a fantastic Power Apps, which has been developed by policing for policing to improve the way and to improve the accuracy of information we capture during a policing everyday policing task. So let's get into today's subject. And today I'm joined by Len Hordes and Katie Burgess from Warwickshire Police, who are going to give us a demonstration of their new Stop Search Power App, which has been developed for daily use in the force. And I'm going to come to Katie first with a quick question. So why did you and the team develop this app? And briefly, what does it do? Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Katie Burgess. I'm a business change manager from Warwickshire Police, as David has kindly introduced. And thank you so much as I echo the thanks for joining us today. So why do we do this? From our previous alliance with West Mercia and following the separation which ended on the 31st of March 2022, we knew that a number of key applications and functionality were going to be lost, and one of which was the stop and search oracle system. So our need to provide something for our force was immediate and urgent. And looking at Microsoft 365, it seemed an opportunity to utilise this new capability that we had, specifically Power Apps. Working with our managed service delivery partner, Visual, we've created some Power Apps as a minimum viable products to deliver these missing capabilities. Stop and search is what we will be showcasing today, as you know, uh, as it is a high impact operational process that was delivered at pace. So that is in short why. OK, that's brilliant. Now, I think one of the most important things is we need to see it in action. So, uh, Len, could you uh, pop yourself on screen and let's get you to show us the demonstration. Please pop your questions into the chat as we go along uh, and we'll pick it up as we go through. But let's see the actual app that officers use in the front line, first of all. Um, so hopefully you can see there that's the you know you, you go to the power apps whichever way you do it through your buttons or whatever I've selected stop and search and that's the opening screen that comes up um, and what I'm intending to do is just do a quick demo from top to bottom of uh, of how it might look so I'll shall I go let's go with it and uh, first really important first of all is that you actually have to enter the officer's name uh, collar number in first yeah I suppose that's for double crewing it is. Uh, and there's, com there's something at the end as well where you, talk, where you can uh, dob in your crewmate to say that they've got to fill one in as well. So, so if Fantastic. Richard's trying to avoid doing uh, a form, then the, he, the, his boss knows about the fact he hasn't submitted it as well. So, so uh, that accesses our uh, uh, Active Directory. So there you go. I found Katie Burgess as my supervisor. Is this organised crime or terrorism? Let's say it's not. Uh, first name David, last name Bailey. It looks dodgy character straight away, so we'd expect to stop and search him. Record type live, let's say it's uh, uh, 12 o'clock, 12.05. The search type is a drop down. What you'll see, the blue arrows tell you um, the mandatory fields. So we, we sort of reversed engineered this. We knew what we had to report from a policy and procedure point of view and from an Oracle point of view. So we, we knew the fields that had to go into sort of home office reports. Et cetera. So we made those ideally sort of idiot proof. You've got to fill them in and these are the things you've got to say. Mm -hmm. So is it a person? Is it a um, with details given, details refused or a vehicle only? So let's say knowing David's in a dodgy character will say details refused. Is there a related stop and search? Yes or no? That's our storm reference, which is, an, I don't need to fill that in. Search by, I'll, I'll promote myself to a, I don't know, a special constable for today. Uh, that would be me doing the search. Um, I don't know, one, two, three, anywhere street. Um, town, let's say Warwick, so get a a shout out for the fact that we're Warwickshire. Um, that, interestingly, since we've seen Doug Blackwood's uh, burglary app, we want the locate me button that's inside that, that became a feature in Microsoft Teams Power Apps from I think June, July this year. So as Katie said, it's an MVP we've got here. We'd, um, we'd love to actually um, modify that a little bit, but that's, uh, that's further down the path. So um, was the vehicle, isn't it, Len, that once you develop it, you can keep enhancing it and moving it and yeah. redeploy it to, uh, to, to do this. So crack on. Let's, let's I mean, as, as Katie said, this was an agile approach um, and we, we had a box of time. We had 20 days of capability that we could buy from Visual to do 
three apps to be truthful over yeah. two months so it was uh to, to get three apps developed by with 20 days worth of their effort i was lucky i was able to lean on some really good sort of subject matter experts so mm -hmm. i had a guy i was hoping he could join me so i could give him a shout out actually sergeant dave valent of warwickshire um and and his boss uh fast Chiste, who yeah. knew the stop and search process inside out and they were my effectively my smes and almost doubled up as we we, we developed the business analysis between us and, and yeah. like, fed the requirements through so so there you okay. are vehicle searched yes or no yeah. i'll say no um uh date of birth i don't know if you want to tell me david but i'll make one up if you like uh yeah, let's go for um how old are you let's let's say you're uh Say you're 19, shall we? Yeah, let's have 19. That seems or actually, a long time. No, I tell you what, David. Let's let's make you under 19. So that oh, might even better. Uh, yeah, that might make it. <laughs> so let's say you're 17, and okay. So, oh, sorry, I've uh, I keep forgetting to press the OK button, uh, and I've got to put the date. So let's go okay. the year. I'll go April. I'll go. It was whatever I said and it was whatever your birthday was so let's say that now we've said your estimated age is 16. um well, let's fill that in male self-defined ethnicity uh i'm guessing your sort white. of white british uh, white british i'm just finding white british there we go uh that's officer defined ethnicity. So some people might actually want to offer that. We can say that that's what we thought you were. Um, is this a child is defaulted to yes, because I've put that age in there. And now it's forcing me to, well, so it's saying, well, what about your child risk reference or your home address, et cetera. I'll leave those blank for the purpose of the demo because I don't have to fill those in for today. Does that person live outside? An important point, Len, when we were talking yeah. about this is you designed that it defaults to yes after yeah. testing experience said that even for under 18s, that officers sometimes forgot it to change it over. Correct. Where by adding it as a yes as a default, it's yeah. easier for the officer then to turn that off once they've recognised that the person isn't under 18. Exactly, exactly. So we've designed um, this for the officer's behaviour rather than just following a simple We've tried process. to make it foolproof and we knew that was an important thing from a from an MI data you know, a, a output point of view that we need to capture uh, young people like yourself, David. There you go, 16 year olds like yourself. So there we go. Um, description of clothing. Um, oh, very smart today. Got a suit on. Um, has the parent guardian now to be fired? Uh, yes who notified so you can see where it's it's this conditional fields based on what you've put before yeah. um and intelligence information heard david was in london today um don't worry i will delete this uh, data david physical signs uh looked edgy uh, what was seen, suspicious behaviour. I, I, I haven't got time to fill in all the details about your no, suspicious behaviour, right. David, but uh, X. Wearing the suit for the first time in two years. <laughs> <going down laughs> yeah. fine. Shocking the audience, yeah. Um, and then you've got the mandatory things again, the powers used. So you've got the the, the powers that which we could stop somebody. So I don't know, You it's bonfire night. So let's, uh, powers used, fireworks, objects. We were looking for fireworks. Uh, operation we'll say it was no uh, was there a particular county lines burglary no not listed was an object found we could say yes or no was there any other object found no oh sorry um outcome arrested arrested on warrants uh, public order no further action penalty notice whatever um, another is the outcome linked to the subject subject of the article that found well yes it was linked were you arrested yes or no was property seized i'll leave that because it's not mandatory was force used and this is interesting this is where because we're using a sharepoint list we record the fact that force may have used but if then i've got to do a use of force record i've got to start again so it doesn't pull that information through from sharepoint whereas i'm sure our friends from microsoft would say oh if you all bought full fat dataverse and i think you could start linking those bits of information but for another day so force used, yes or no, handcuffs used, yes or no, 
Um, so you can just change them. And, and we've actually realized from the MVP, we wanted to record whether it's compliant handcuffing or non-compliant. So we added that after we went live. So that was a, that was an iteration we did in, in April because we realized that uh, it wasn't something we'd get put that in the original build. So um, let's say that uh, yes, compliant, um, injury or damage, yes or no, recorded on body worn, yes or no, I'll say no, why not, uh, it was broke, whatever. Was it in public view, yes or no, was it conducted in location, uh, in a different location, yes or no, was any clothing removed? I mean, these are self-explanatory, but as I say, we've put it's deliberate in some cases. The, uh, fields that have to be recorded anyway on the paper form. Yeah, it, it was. It was the Oracle database originally we took and we said, OK, that's important that we capture that. Um, this is where you get a chance to, 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 to say, well, yeah, uh, Katie was with me. Um, oops, uh, and it will find your crewmate. There we go. Um, so it was both a male and a female there. Additional comments. Uh, to be deleted. Uh, record status in progress. Should this record be deleted? Well, I actually say yes. You don't normally get that, but uh, and you'll see the submit button. Um, I, I, I can save the record. I'm not going to actually. And, the, and only when you've filled in all of the, the critical information, you can then press the submit button. But I don't want to press that now because um, I think that sort of almost shows the main demo for, for the front end up. That's Should really helpful. Pause for yeah. That, David? yeah, if you could, and I think there's a couple of questions and I'll address some of the things that have already gone in. So this is a, a power app designed for use within the 365 environment and obviously deployable by the officer's mobile device that's on 365. So it is part of that wider build and of course that thing. So if I can just pick up a couple of questions first of all about the fields and then some other elements that'd be really, really important. So sure. there's questions coming from Kevin about does this integrate into records management systems? Well, of course, the record management system has to be able to take the integration of the data. So at the moment, this is built as a standalone solution, but the data output yeah. will cover in a couple of minutes, won't we? Yes, we will. I'll do that yeah. next. Yeah, so there is that that's point. But yeah, at the moment, it can export data, but whether we can then import into other systems as the, the local piece of work to be done. And again, why did you create this on PowerApps rather than incorporating into one of the other uh, mobile solutions that you've got? Uh, it was the it was a low cost, low code uh, app. Uh, it, was, it was capability that we just only really started to utilize uh, and it was seen we could deliver it, I think, as Kate said, at pace. OK, and there's a question here about our extra licenses required for this or does it come out of the 365 suite? This of is course. inside our E365, uh, e, e, sorry, E3 licenses, standard license. And in, by the end of the month, we're hoping to actually have this available to all forces via the PDS solutions catalog. Yes. So yep. forces will be able to download it and implement it and connect it up to their own local data sets. And of course, all the details are included. So if they need to customize any fields, they can do that in their in their own platform, of course, correct. as well. Yeah, correct. Uh, the, 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 I've all, all I've got to do is anonymize like the DPIA that we've had to do for it and just take out sort of names of, of, of our information asset owners and things like that and we're almost ready. I think we're a week or two away of having it in the catalogue. That's fantastic. So a couple of questions, another question here from Sean. For the fields that require manual free text input, you see the officers, can the information be automatically extracted from background systems to avoid inaccuracies in the data? Now you've gone through a couple of decisions on that, haven't you, as you went through? Yeah, yeah. Um, what you've, yeah, I mean, you could, I hate to say copy and paste, but yeah, you can take stuff across, but no, this is, this is data input by an officer. So it's keyed data, it's not intelligent, it's not pulling data through. So there's no integration because we haven't built this in Microsoft Dataverse and, and, and built those links or Dataverse for Teams. So unfortunately, no, it's it's user finger error and the subject to it's user finger input. Mm. Yeah. But you have linked it to the AZ, the Azure directory. Oh yeah, so, so you, there's, there's some intelligence around the, 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 the names of the officers and that links then to your workflow as well because uh, I won't have a chance to show the workflow but the, this will go through to a, a, a supervising officer to say uh, can you review this, doc, the, this, this record and make sure it's approved or um, you can give feedback to it and send it back to the officer and the officer can view in their power up their ones that they've created only or that are under review. 
Okay, so that's fantastic that we've got the data capture. Could you show us where the data goes and how that can be used now? It, it goes to a SharePoint list, which you can view in, in lists itself um, that way, or you can, the, people tend to use the normally the, the SharePoint view. And, and what I've done today, I've, I've just prepared, just done that and hidden the columns with the names of the individuals that were stopped and searched. So uh, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. That's how the list looks with the record status, the unique reference number that's been created, who it's created by, sorry, uh, the stop date, etc., the ethnicity. So all those columns that you've seen me fill in at the front end, that's how it's presented in the back end. Um, and, and you can, you know, you just you scroll across and you see all the information that's uh, that's that's on there and you'll see the status there. I've, I've, I've sorted it by latest to earliest. So you'll see one has been approved from today. One's in progress, one's under review. That gives you an idea of the status is on the uh, on the applications. Have, have I got a chance to as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Power so, BI. Power BI. What you've got, you've got this little clever feature here where you can look at the visualize the list in Power BI. I don't have a special Power BI license, so it refreshes each time. But this is out of the box that comes with your E365 license. If you do, and I'll, I'll, there's one that's ah. Uh, Damn, it's, I've got to re re recreate it. So what you do, I, I'll, I'll go there, I'll say counts of rows. I might want to know how many people have been arrested. Uh, I might want to know about, um, I don't need the incident reference. Uh, it's, it, you can click on the things that you're particularly interested in. Uh, am I bothered about whether there was uh, an appropriate adult? Uh, do I want to know if we, I don't know, any, anything you like is it is am I bothered about male female so that's these are sort of dashboard information you can get out of power bi built in uh, if you've got a, a, a enhanced power bi license once you've saved that list you can publish it top right left hand corner but um you'll see there not today for me thanks so we I, we have people who do that for us david that's brilliant, Len, and thanks for demonstrating that. And there's a lot more to it, and uh, you know we are looking at the next steps for, uh, for it. Uh, I'm going to come over to Richard in a second just to explain how people will be able to access the Power App and to go through the steps to implement it. So, Richard, could you just take us through is how people will access it, where it is in the solutions catalogue? And there's apparently a form just in place temporarily whilst we just get finalised the documentation. Yeah, absolutely, David. Um, um, it's really easy to certainly um, uh, look and browse the solutions in the solution catalogue. If you're not a member of the tenant, for example, you can just go to the PDS website uh, and it's tucked away under delivery and programs. The full solution catalogue is there. You'll be able to browse the uh, stop and search solution when it lands. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but you'll also be able to see the 36 other solutions we've got in the solution catalogue with a description of what it is, screenshots and so on. Now, it is really important, David, isn't it, to, to if you are thinking of uh, downloading the solution, you've got some conversation to, to be had in force and there are really key uh, conversations. Firstly, it's really important you have a chat with your IT department. Um, I mean, is your force in a position to adopt the Power App straight away, the stop and search solution? So you might have an enthusiasm to to land it in force, but is your force uh, IT set up in terms of the 365 environment? Is it ready for it? Uh, is it ready for a mobile device? So have you de deployed teams into a mobile device solution? So make sure those are available first. Then I'd speak to your local ISO. Really, really important to get buy in from your ISO locally ahead of any installation. It can um, can uh, deal with a number of issues and challenges um, further down the line. And, and finally, speak to your business change team, you know, um, the Kates and the Lens of this world in your force. Um, make sure you have have a conversation with them. Where is this on the roadmap? Is it on the roadmap? Is it something that you want to be added to that future development uh, strategy? Now, you can't download um, the solution without being a member of the PDS tenant, so we will assist you if you need access to be um, to be a part of the tenant. Um, and you can reach out to us. Uh, Dave's very kindly uh, popping on the list on, on the screen, the list of engagement leads for each of the regions. Um, so if you need to reach out to one of us, we can uh, give you some uh, tailored advice and support in terms of getting onto the PDS 
uh, catalog. Now, the solution is not quite ready, uh, and I want to really pay tribute to, uh, to Len and Kate that they are a small team. They've done some fabulous stuff over the last few months. Um, and what they're doing is over and above their, their normal work. You know, these don't, don't just get put to, thrown together at the last minute. There's preparation for these type of events and Len and, and, and Kate will be packaging up the application as soon as they're able. So please bear with us. But we've popped in a, a, a placeholder, if you like, with a form uh, in it. Uh, and if you're interested about downloading the solution, you can register your interest. Uh, on the PDS website and, and say, yep, when it's available, let me know and we will be in touch and you'll be able to access the solution as and when it's ready. So please bear with us um, and, and please understand some of the pressures that um, local forces have, uh, you know, got and, and, and the support and assistance they're giving to wider policing. Thanks, David. Thanks, Richard. And we'll come back to questions again. So if you've got any more questions, we've got a couple more to ask Katie and Len in a second. But you will have noticed the team bar me because it's not often you get a chance to broadcast a webinar with Big Ben on your shoulder. So I haven't used the background, but you'll have noticed today the team have had poppies in their background. And this is a part of the PDS uh, support for the Royal British Legion this year, where we have a poppy appeal. You can make your digital poppy count where you can go over to the PDS website uh, visit the site and look for the Poppy Appeal tab. You can download appropriate teams' backgrounds, which have been inspired by poppies, and there's a link there to make a donation to the Royal British Legion uh, through through a special link that's been created for policing. And what we'll know in a few weeks' time is how much money has been raised through that link across the UK policing in support of the Royal British Legion. So I've got my poppy on my tie today, but I normally have the digital background on. But again, that's another way that we can all work together. So I'm going to go back to questions now and there's a couple of more questions come in here so Katie I'm coming to you now about um, how does this work in terms of in case the officer is offline so you can complete uh, the input and input into into the form um, of the sub and search and save to the device as long as you save to the device you can then upload it and submit it once you're back in an area of signal and in terms of other steps, the you know one of the challenges when we're, we're beginning to build a structure around 365 is that the data can sit in the 365 list, but there's no reason why it can't be imported into other platforms. And we are beginning to build integrations from between different share, SharePoint based solutions as well. So potentially that use of force form that Len mentioned. Do you yeah. see that being connected up at some point in the future when you get around to developing that? Absolutely, that's that's one of our next uh, steps that we uh, want to be able to um, have the data more integrated, um, either with other systems where it needs to appear or, or just uh, rather than separate SharePoint lists to have that as one data storage um, uh, element. So we that's on our, our next step, as, as Len's already mentioned and I did, these were very much um, built at pace as MVPs when we had to deliver the capability and ensure we didn't lose that capability upon the separation at the end of March. Um, and so that's why it may seem, you know, a little bit backwards to how we've done it, but there's there's good reasons and we've, we've got data control and management in place as much as we can do. Right. And one of the important things, whilst you deliver this at pace, you have to maintain a very clear change log, decision log and, and approach to that. So, you know, I know we're, Richard will be looking to do something around change champions around this in the future. But Len, if you want to quickly share your screen and just show some of the information and the thinking that went into developing this solution with the front line in particular. Um, yeah, we just used a, a Kate and I developed a, a like a tracker almost. Um, uh, we called it a business change impact analysis, but it morphed into a readiness tracker really. And it's just in very basic terms, it's why are you doing uh, what is it uh, what does it look like now what's the future state what's the gap and and then you just go through well what's changing in terms of system processes technology what's happening about the data and you'll see sorry if i just go down a bit these are the sort of things that we uh, we looked at when well, it's going to be on devices it's going to be on laptops it's going to be on phones i mean you can see the way it renders it's designed for a phone um we understanding those then those different impacts in people impacts, process impacts, data impacts. We then said, OK, what's our communication and engagement in requirements? That's why I would have liked the uh, my sergeant on because he worked really hard to make sure things were published on, uh, on our force orders, on our intranet, 
Um, we looked at the training requirements and it's more about briefing because it's intuitive rather than training. And then testing, we had about 30 volunteers who uh, who just said, we, we put it in, out to them and said, rip it apart before we went live. Uh, and it was an agile development. And then what, what do we need to do from a leadership point of view? Uh, we re just tweaked the procedure. The policy was more or less the same, but it had, had a refresh. Um, was it you know, affecting jobs? No, but, um, but leadership endorsement. And then there were some benefits and some risks and concerns. And then the nice thing is the big smiley face at the end, MVP delivered on schedule and in use. So that was a, a, a whiz through, if you like, our checklist of, a, of our readiness thing. So. Not a really good example of, of managing the process. There's a couple more comments just come in and uh, we're getting close to the bottom of the hour. And Alex uh, Metcalf from GMP, great app, Len. And uh, any update on the list of solutions that we'll be collaborating on to deliver? And Alex, we popped a, a new chat into the PDS Force collaboration team yesterday where we're asking forces to pop in what they're working on at the moment. We are developing a, a list solution at the moment where it'll be integral, but in the meantime, the, you've all got the Force PDS collaboration channel. If you're working on something or you need something or you're scoping something at the moment, please pop it into the chat so we can start collaborating informally whilst we're building that list in the background. I really want to thank uh, Katie and Len for their input today and just to tease what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Next week is going to be a really important uh, webinar. We're bringing in Adobe and we're bringing in a colleague from Chicago in Adobe, uh, Adobe who's going to be talking us through one of the perhaps underutilized tools that's already available to all forces in terms of Adobe Acrobat and the need to do and we're doing redaction of content. Uh, there's a full redaction tool with, built within Acrobat uh, DC Pro, which actually every police user has access to via the PDS Adobe agreement. Uh, we don't pay licenses for every user, but there's the agreement means that every user in policing does have access to the full solution, which is phenomenal. And I learned how to do this this, this week. It's going to save me hours in terms of being able to redact content and uh, have a full audit process. So anybody who might need to do that from freedom information teams to case officers to finance teams, teams, procurement teams, you know, sometimes need to have that uh, redaction tool available to them. It'll be a really in-depth, quick look in less than half an hour in terms of where you can go, how you can use that tool, and it's no cost to police. It's already there. It's in our agreements already. So please join us for that webinar in it next week. Uh, we're also working on some content in terms of the future roadmap around 365, and we're beginning to just finalise the content for our first of our what does M365 BAU mean in the future. So keep an eye on the PDS websites for those updates. Uh, what I'd ask you to do is just keep an eye on our website, keep an eye on the chat, join the Force Collaboration team. If you do need anything, please get in touch with us through the contact form and we'll be able to help you. The business engagement team are there to help you navigate this across your departments, across the force and to join us all together. So please join us. So you might wonder where I am today. I'm at the actual APC, the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners and National Police Chiefs Council Partnership Summit down in London, where PDS are to talk to chiefs and PCCs about the work we're doing to help deliver the police digital strategy. So that's why I've got the tie on. It's a wrong time since I've worn a tie. I did remember how to do it. But we want to thank you for joining us today in our live webinar and hopefully see you again very soon.